If you're looking for the inshore performance of a bay boat to catch snook along the mangrove shorelines or tarpon in the inlet, yet also want the look, function, and feel of a traditional center console that's capable of trolling for kings and dolphin offshore, then a hybrid bay boat in the 23 to 27 foot range might be your best choice. Today on Florida Sportsman Best Boat, we're showcasing boats that can take you deep into the backcountry in less than a foot of water or many miles offshore. These are hybrid bay boats in the 23 to 27 foot range with shallow water agility that can also reach the Gulf Stream. Some key features to look for in this class are lower gunnels when compared to a deeper V center console, which makes landing a fish or throwing a cast net easier. Large bow casting platforms that are recessed down into the cockpit to make standing on them surer footed. A hole with a sharp entry at the bow combined with a flat stern so you can have a shallow draft without sacrificing ride. Having the bow low enough to the water enables you to install a bow-mounted trolling motor. A large live well built into the leaning post gives you plenty of capacity for your bait and keeps the weight of the water off your transom. Index storage allows you to carry all of your gear you need for a full day on the water, easily accessible but out of the way. A hydraulic motor bracket lets you raise your outboard vertically, which adds to the boat's ability to go shallow. Join our host Dave East and Rick Riles as we feature three hybrid bay boats that let an angler fish for snook to sailfish all in the same boat. Dorado 23, the Schaefer 24, and the Andros Tarpon 26. They'll be conducting walkthroughs, test drives, and reviewing key features, all to help you decide that this is the best boat for you. Welcome to this episode of Best Boat. I'm Dave East, boating editor of Florida Sports and Magazine. And I'm Rick Riles, program director of Florida Sports and Radio. What we've got for you this week is something a little different. The three boats that we brought, we really refer to them as a hybrid bay boat, but for a lack of better terminology, I'm really not sure what we call them. I don't know either, Dave, but they all do so many different things, it's hard to put a tag on them and say that's what they are. And they really do. Last year, before we started filming episode one, we sent a survey out to all of our forum members on the Florida Sports and website, and we asked two things. What categories would you like to see? What manufacturers would you like to see? One thread that came right to the top was people were asking for us to do an episode on these hybrid bay boats and they asked specifically for the Dorado, the Schaefer, and the Andros. Well, last year we weren't able to put it together. This year, we've got it for you. And let me tell you something, Dave. It's a great, we're gonna have a great show and here's the reason why. These boats are all so functional. They're very different. Some of their roots go way back, go further back than Florida sportsmen, but they all do great things and stand on their own also. Well, it's funny you say that because I went into our archives at the office and I pulled a Florida Sportsman from May of 1974 and all of the ads in here are these style boats. So back then, they were the boat to have, they worked great, the function was perfect, but you know what? The function still works today. Boats that you can power with less power, handle great in the sea and do a whole lot of things. If you want a boat, one boat, that's got to be real versatile. You know what, I, I could look high and low across all the boats being built today. I'm not sure you could match the function of these boats. This is a boat that we can get in very shallow water. We beached them here, no sweat, but tomorrow you're gonna see us take these boats a good ways offshore and look for dolphin and kingfish. You're, you're right, Dave, but let's get in them and start going through them because each stand on their own, I gotta show you some of these boats. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more Florida Sportsman Best Boat. This segment is brought to you by Costa Del Mar. See what's out there. Florida Sportsman, the source for fishing in the outdoors since 1969. Florida's largest fishing and outdoors magazine. Year-round TV with real-time Florida Sportsman and Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Florida's number one online resource. Over 8 million page views a month. Live reports from the water every Saturday morning. Hands-on instruction, seminars and demonstrations. Books, charts and more. Become part of the Florida Sportsman community today. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. This week, we'll be featuring 23 to 27 foot hybrid bay boats. All right, Rick, the Andros Tarpon 26. What I love about the bow of this boat, it's got a raised casting platform, but what they've done is you've got two insulated eight foot boxes. They're fish boxes, but they also double as locking rod boxes. And in the center, I've got an additional dry storage box. So not only have they used this for a casting deck, but they've utilized it for storage too. But having the combing bolsters along here too makes it really nice on your knees. I tell you where you see a lot of these boats, Dave, it's on the west coast like Boca Grande in that area. Those tarpon fights can go on a long time. 
I can promise you those guys like having these homing bolsters up here to put their knees against. And a lot of times you'll see a fighting chair mounted up here uh, on the Tarpon 26s to fight a big fish from. And this day, one thing we noticed when we ran this boat right away, it's really dry. This big bow like this with the height to it really keeps the water from splashing over the top, regardless of the choppy conditions. All right, Rick, well, let's walk back and take a look at the center console. All right, because there's some things on this one I really like. Rick, you know, we talk about center consoles in every boat, but this Tarpon 26, the design of the console is really good. Plenty of room for your flush metal electronics, and the door is large enough to where if you put a head down in here, you can actually get into it. Yeah, which is, the heads look great on the showroom floor. This one is designed for when you're on the water, okay? And you can tell the difference. If they're easy to get into like this, they'll get used every now and then. If not, they just help you sell boats. Now, let me tell you something else about this boat that we see on a lot of this genre of boats is a second station. That means that wherever the owner of this boat fishes, there's probably sight fishing involved. You would be amazed at how much more you can see from up there than you can down on the deck. Well, just like a tower on a great big sport fish boat, but just a smaller version of it, you're higher, you can see down, and you also have controls up there, so while you're up there looking, you can still control the boat. Right, and these are very popular boats with fishing guides, and there's a reason. Uh, certainly fuel economy is one of them, and being basically very versatile, no frills is another one. The third one is they can get up there, run the boat, and see things, and tell their customers where to put the bait. Well, a lot of the guides I talk to that are running this style of boat, they have it for just that reason. They can put four guys on, maybe a fifth, all their gear, everybody's secure inside the boat, they won't leave this tower all day long. They'll stay up there, they'll drive the boat, they'll do everything they need to do from this tower because it's really not that tall. You're standing almost on the top of the console. So you've got elevation without being out of contact with everybody else in the boat. It also enables you, Dave, to take at least one more person because you're not down on the deck. You're not part of the crowd. If the boat's crowded, you're up there, you're out of the group. So if this boat's comfortable fishing five people, if you've got a captain that spends a whole day up there, suddenly you're comfortable fishing an extra person. Rick, I know we're only in a 26-foot boat, but look at the size of the cockpit that we've got here. Well, you're right, and that comes back to why they make such great charter boats too, Dave. Is there's a lot of room, everything is very simple and easy to get to. Well, we've got two storage compartments built into the floor of the boat here. Back here across the transom, you've got two smaller compartments that actually are where you can put uh, chum, and it'll go over the side automatically, or you can use it for storage, and a 50-gallon live well in the center. Well, that speaks to the fact that it's primarily a fishing boat. We talked about in the opening of the show, they do a lot of things. What they do best is take you fishing. Right. On the outside of the transom, we've got a swim platform and a power pole on this side, which you're seeing more and more in a lot of boats. But in the center, you've got the porta bracket. It's a lot different than the hydraulic jack plate. Hydraulic jack plate just goes up and down. And these do too, but it has the engine go up and down and stay vertical, so it keeps the thrust from your prop parallel with the water. So what you're telling me, the end result is going to be you're going to be able to run shallower. <laughs> you didn't make the bottom go any deeper down, but you made the surface of the water come higher up, right? That's exactly what you did. What I love about this design, if you raise that porter bracket all the way out, and you trim your motor all the way up, your lower unit's gonna be about that high out of the water. So if you leave the boat in the water overnight or say for a week with bottom paint or whatever, that motor's nowhere near touching the water. Ah, oh, that's gotta mean a longer life for your motor. Yeah, it's gonna save the anodes on your motor and less corrosion. Even though they've kept the old style hull, they've added the refinements inside to make this boat compatible with all of the new stuff being built. Right, and, and when we get into the beam of a boat, obviously every time you go a little wider, everything's a trade-off, we talk about it every episode, Every time you go a little wider, you increase your planing surface, it requires more horsepower. But we've got so much more horsepower than we had even 20 years ago that now it's easier to build a boat like this wider because we got the motors to push them. Well, one thing I really do like about this Andros, it's all built in-house. They don't farm anything out. Everything is done right there at the plant. And they're using modern day construction. So you've got the old style hull, you've got the ride, you've got everything you want, but they're using modern technology when it comes to all their glass and their, and their uh, resin. Stay tuned for this week's Florida Sportsman Best Boat Seminar. This segment is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. It's 200 streamlined horsepower of Yamaha forward thinking. The all new F200 inline four stroke. Whether you're an offshore angler, pontoon cruiser, bay boater, or walleye hunter, the responsive and fuel-efficient F200 combines amazing power and versatility in one incredibly compact and lightweight package. The all-new F200. Legendary Yamaha reliability and the freedom of forward thinking. Welcome back. 
Here's Dave and Rick with this week's Florida Sportsman Best Boat Seminar. You know, Dave, my Uncle Lester used to take me warmouth fishing all the time. He'd drive me crazy. He'd never anchor the boat. He'd always tie it to a tree for us to fish by. So, boy, you don't put an anchor where your fish are. They hear it. Forty years later, I'm learning he was probably right. Well, you know what? He really was. And the innovation of the power pole has really changed the fishing because now you can ease up into an area and without any effort at all, you push a button, power pole goes down, holds the boat in place. And you know what it doesn't do? It doesn't splash, okay? It doesn't rattle chain on the bottom while the boat's shifting back and forth. Whether we want to admit it or not, Dave, fish are learning, okay? And they've learned to adapt to the sound of that anchor going down. This power pole, they don't even know you're there. They're easy to operate. You have controls on the console. You have a key fob to keep around your neck. Power poles are swift, silent, secure. All right, Rick, let's take a look at the Schaefer. This is their 240V model. Dave, I tell you what, if you're an old timer like me and you look back, you recognize where that boat came from. Well, Ben Schaefer originally used to rebuild a lot of the old pro lines, a lot of the old aqua sports, and after rebuilding them and making refinements to them like stringers and new floors and new, you know, basically new everything, he figured, you know what, why don't we just build this brand new from scratch, make a few changes to make it better, end up making a better boat. Well, as you and I have seen a thousand times, guys get these old boats and they pay money to restore them because they think they're getting a great value. Well, <laughs> when they're done, they've ended up spending more than they would have on a new boat. Well, I talked with Ben and he was questioning, what is it about these aqua sports? You know, these guys keep bringing me these boats. It costs me more. I'm charging them more than if they bought a brand new boat. Then he realized he could merge today's technology with those original hull concepts, come up with what is now the Schaefer 240B. We're going to take a look at this boat a little closer, but what I love about it is the versatility. We've got a bow-mounted trolling motor. We've got a porta bracket in the back. We can get this boat really, really skinny, way back in the Everglades or up in the Keys in the back country. But it's big enough, if we want to take it out and chase a dolphin, she's up to the task. Oh, Dave, 30 miles offshore, you're as comfortable as you can be in a boat like this. And like you say, put a trolling motor on it, and it draws, I think you told me, 13 inches? I mean, you can't do that with any other offshore boat other than this genre of boats. You know how Ben judges the size of his hatches in here? What's that? How many five-gallon buckets can you put in? <laughs> okay? He was showing me how you can store like nine five-gallon buckets below deck in this boat. That's something a fisherman loves. Well, if you look at their front casting deck, the storage that you were talking about is under these two hatches that are port and starboard. But you're always bragging about catching big fish. Of course, I've never huge seen fish, it. Huge I'm fish. just going to trust you on it, but look at the size of this look fish box. Look at that box. fish box. You could easily fit in there and I could close the lid. <laughs> I could almost stand up in there and you could close the lid. If I want a 50-pound cobia, not only do you have to have room to get him in the box, you've got to have enough access area here where you can get him in thrashing. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, if you, a lot of boats have got big fish boxes, but little lids on them. That doesn't help you when you're trying to put a hot dolphin or hot cobia in there. Well, not only that, if we're not using it as a fish box like today, look at the amount of storage. Let's say we're going to run over to the islands or we're going to go to the Keys for a week. All of the stuff you're going to take can fit in all of the storage in the bow. still leaves the whole transom open for your other stuff. So I love this design. Quick recap of the bow, all right? Both hatches hold three five-gallon buckets. Anchor locker holds 600 feet of anchor line in a very large fish box right here. Everything's this trade-off. This is a well-laid-out bow platform. It really is, and the bow is low enough to the water. We can use a bow-mounted trolling motor. Just adds to the ability of the boat to get up in that shallow water. Makes it more versatile. Sure it does. All right, Rick. As we move our way back to the helm, there's some things on the front of this console I love. I mean, we've got a cooler here in the front that you see in a lot of center sure. consoles, but the storage and the access into your systems here, it makes it so much easier if you have to go in there and do anything like add a depth finder or work on your batteries. But better than that, I can take it away like this, and I've got full Get in access there and work. In there. Sure, Dave. One of the things that sets Schaefer apart. This looks so basic, and yet you showed me how neat it is. All right. Let me tell you something. I wish I'd have done on my personal boat, and I didn't. Powder coating, I thought it was for sissies. I thought it made a white T-top and that's pretty. No, what it does is it doesn't hit, okay? And it makes the boat look good so much longer. Oh, Dave, you wanna talk about a dash that I love? How about this? Recessed back out of the sunlight, away from the elements. I'll guarantee you we've got a cap that goes over here, lock it all up, you're done. Well, if you look at the whole boat, you look at their, their everything matches. Their hard tops, 
really blend into the rest of the boat. You've got storage built in here, you've got storage built in here. A lot of times they just use those little nets up here for your PFDs and everything. This is actually molded fiberglass. Not only is it going to last longer, it looks great. Oh, it absolutely looks great. Let's talk about this, this rocket launcher. You were really impressed with this. This is the coolest thing I've really seen. Everybody's got this kind of a live wheel. You open it up, there's plenty of room in there for all your baits and your access. What I have never seen on a boat before is the ability to do this so you can clear your cast net. Or, you know how you get that last, last green? Bait. Yep. And he is so smart because he's seen 50 of his little buddies get taken out. This is so much easier to grab him. All right, Rick, let's wrap up the shaper here in the back of the boat. Nice big cockpit. We've got storage in the floor. And there's another one of your another five, one of gallon five gallon buckets, buckets you buddy. A lot of storage. Got a built-in live well in the transom, and we've got a little bit of a barrel in this transom. It's not flat across the back, the back, which I really like. It's kind of cool. It adds some style. It does, and, and of course, once again, we've got a bracket, which really defines this genre of boats. You've got to be able to get your motor up to take advantage of what these boats do best, which is fish offshore and then come into shallow water. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Fishing is my passion. You can find me out on the water 300 days out of the year. I don't need a fishing license because I'm age 65 exempt. I do need it though, to pitch in and help keep our fisheries healthy. By purchasing a license, it supports research projects, wildlife enforcement, hatcheries, and much more. So my grandkids and future generations will be able to share this passion too. My name is Jim Harder and those are the reasons I do. When filming for Florida Sportsman Best Boat, the cast and crew stayed at Pirates Cove Resort and Marina in Stewart, Florida. Family owned and operated, featuring 50 renovated rooms with an outstanding restaurant and a full service 50 slip marina. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. This week we're featuring 23 to 27 foot hybrid bay boats. All right, Rick, the last boat that we want to show everybody is the Dorado. She's 23 feet long. There's no top, which I like this. I mean, you can get it with the top, with the T-top, or with the tower like we've seen already. But I love this open design. You're a no T-top guy. You know, I mean, there's different kinds of candy bars. Me, I need to stay handsome at all times. So being under a T-top <laughs> helps me with that. But I tell you what, there's a lot of functional reasons not to have a T-top or a tower. There really are. And talking about function, this boat has the same function as the other two that we saw. Rough water capability, get your way back up in the shallows or anywhere in between. This boat, very big water capable, but may float a little shallower. Remember, you start adding the weights of T-tops and towers and things like that. Everything's a trade-off. Every 100 pounds you put on your boat, she sits a little lower in the water. It does, but you know what? Let's go through some of the interior features on this boat and see how it compares to the other two that we brought. You know what makes this an excellent representative of the hybrid bay boat, if you will, Dave? It's got a raised casting platform. It, the 23 Dorado is the perfect height casting platform for me. When I stand up here, I can see further, I can cast further, but I'm still secure with my legs against this combing bolster. Well, what I love about this boat, here again, we're talking about versatility. She's 23 feet long, but a nice open design like this, it's got uh, provisions for a bow-mounted trolling motor. I can see myself trolling for dolphin in this boat, hitting the beach for kingfish, hitting the back country, taking it to the Keys. I can take this boat lobster on mini season. I would even take this boat at Lake Okeechobee with a bow mount trolling motor and go chase bass. But you wouldn't do that any faster than I'd run it across to the Bahamas on a pretty day. Exactly, 23 foot boat, a lot of versatility in this style of boat. There's a lot of 23 foot boats out there, but they really wouldn't do everything this boat will do. All right, let's look at some of the features that are built into this 23 Dorado. Dave, we talked about the height of this casting platform. I love it. But one of the reasons for having casting platform, we got plenty of storage underneath. Well, you really do. She's only 23 feet long, but anything that you were going to take to the island, let's say you're going to go for a week, it all fit right here under the bow. No big hatches, problem. big access. Easy to get stuff in and out of. Dave, we've seen a lot of these new kind of rod holders that they got on these Dorados that are actually a combination drink and rod holder, and they've got them up here in the bow where people fish, where they should have been from ever since we started building boats. Rick, you know what I love about the console in this Dorado? It's the size of it. Even a guy with your stature can see over it easy, but really, it's not the height, it's just the overall size. So many 23-foot boats put these big, giant, overpowering consoles, and I understand, you know, for access to a potty and stuff, but a console this size, it's everything you need it to be. It gives you so much more room to walk around, so if not having a potty inside the boat is really not that big of a deal, wow, this really fits. I tell you what people don't take into account real often. Look how wide it is from the side of the console 
to the gunner, okay? Two guys fighting fish, going in opposite directions. They can pass each other, no problem. All right, Rick, you know what? The seat has a built-in live well, which we see a lot on boats, but really, that's where the live well belongs. It is, because it's in the center of the boat, and it's the center of gravity. That's where you want the heaviest part of your boat. So it's well thought out when it's there. I've never liked them on the sides of the boat, never will. But Dave, I, I tell you what, I like what they did with the stern seating too, because we've talked about it on other models and other genres. That's the most comfortable place to sit on the boat. Here again, you'll see a porta bracket. All of these boats in the same genre are all going to use a porta bracket for the same features we've already talked about. One thing that's pretty cool, they actually attach their power pole to the porta bracket. That way you're not putting any more holes in your boat and it gets it even further back behind the engine. Well, I, obviously you've taught me the, the advantages of those and I really like it. I'll tell you what. The, the idea of setting it back and having the water come up to the motor, setting the motor back and having the water come up to it, a lot of validity to it. It helps you run a lot shallower. All right, Dave, let's give an overall on the 23 Dorado. One of the first things I like best, I like the height of the casting platform. It's not so tall that you feel unstable for us old guys, and it's tall enough to give you a better cast and a better vision out front with plenty of storage beneath it. Right, as we work our way back, I love the size of this console. It's as big as it needs to be, but it doesn't overpower the boat. Easy to walk around. Like you said, two of us can walk past at the same time. And really, it fits the boat. If you had a bigger console in this boat, it would look a little bit out of place. I like the basic rocket launcher like this. I do too, and you know what? The back of the boat, there's plenty of room behind there in the cockpit. Two guys, three guys can get back there and bottom fish or check out their trolling rods. I love that little bit of a barrel shape in the transom. It really adds a lot of flair to the boat because like we had said earlier, the old classic style of this boat, it just looks good. It does, Dave, but let's talk about it. It's, it's smaller, okay, than the other boats that we looked at today. It's lower sided, but that also makes it easier to trailer, drafts less water, run it with less horsepower, and a lot less cost of maintenance. Yeah, it really does. It gives you the function of all the boats that we looked at. If you want this style of boat in a hybrid bay boat, then you can do light offshore, you can do inshore, you can do a little snorkeling, a little, little diving, really anything you want to do in the boat. This size boat may just be a good fit. If you're looking for one boat that gives you the versatility to fish for redfish, tarpon, grouper, and dolphin, then a hybrid bay boat in the 23 to 27 foot range might be the best boat for you. I've really enjoyed today. It's been a lot of fun on these boats. We've had a great time doing a lot of different things with them. I'm, I'm sold on this genre. It's not the best boat for everybody, but it may well be the best boat for you. For more information on the boats that you saw today or for all the boats that we've tested in Best Boat, go to our website, floridasportsman.com, and click on the boating page on the Best Boat link. And we'll see you next week on Florida Sportsman's Best Boat. Be sure to join us next week when we cover 16 to 22 foot flat boats on Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Each month, turn to Florida Sportsman for the best in boating and fishing coverage.